6.2, apply properties of rational exponents. So we definitely need some humor to start this lesson. Dear Algebra, please stop asking us to find your x. She's not coming back. Properties of rational exponents. Let a and b be real numbers and let m and n be integers. Well then, a to the m times a to the n um, yeah, I think we've learned this before, is a to the m plus n. Nothing changes here. So an example, if I have the same basis, 5 to the 1 half times 5 to the 3 halves, for instance, same basis, add the exponents. 1 half plus 3 halves is 4 halves. In other words, 2. And you can just leave it like that. a to the m to the n power Power to a power becomes more powerful, and you multiply those exponents, a to the m times n, and so nothing changes here either. 3 to the 3 halves, let's square that. Well, we get 3 to the 3 over 2 times 2, and so that is just 3 to the 3rd power, and we can leave it like that. A B to the M power is A to the M power times B to the M power. Um, let's do 16 times 9 to the 1 half. Just like we were doing in the last section where I said break it down before you build it back up, we get maybe 16 to the 1 half times 9 to the 1 half, and then you see how easy that becomes to do because 16 to the 1 half is just 4, and 9 to the 1 half is just 3, and 4 times 3 is 12. And so that's a whole lot easier than trying to do 16 times 9 in your head and then taking the square root of that because I don't want to do that. A to the negative m, of course, is just 1 over a to the m power. And for these, I should probably say a does not equal 0, since I have a is in the denominator for both of those. So I have 36 to the negative 1 half. Let's do that for an example. That is just 1 over 36 to the 1 half. And 36 to the 1 half is just, what times what is 36? Well, 6 times 6 is 36. Um, when I divide, same basis, subtract the exponents, a to the m minus n. So if I had a problem like 4 to the 5 halves over 4 to the 1 half, instead of working out the numerator and the denominator, let's just say, well, we have the same basis. Let's subtract the exponents. Just like I did here, I added. Here I will subtract because I'm dividing. And so I get 4 to the 5 halves minus 1 half is just 4 halves, which is 2. And 4 squared, you could write a 16. Or you could leave it like that since I don't want you using your calculator anyway. A over b to the m power is a to the m over b to the m. And this one I better say that b does not equal 0 because thou shalt not divide by 0. And let's do, for example, let's do 27 over over 64 to the one-third power. Well, when I'm starting this, I try and reduce if I can. I cannot reduce 27 over 64, so I'm just going to do 27 to the one-third over 64 to the one-third. Asking myself what times what times what is 27, I get 3. What times what times what is 64, and I get 4. And that is my final answer. So let's go ahead and use some of these. I immediately see I have the same basis and I'm multiplying, so I'm going to add the exponents. In order to add those exponents, I probably want a common denominator. So maybe 24 would be the common denominator. So I multiplied by 3, and then I multiplied by 4, so 5 times 4 is 20. Okay, and so now I'm just going to add. 3 over 24 plus 20 over 24, and I get 12 to the 23 over 24. Done with that one. Okay, here I cannot do anything to combine these, so I'm just going to do 5 to the 1 third and cube that, times 7 to the 1 fourth, and then cube that separately. And so 5 to the 1 third to the third is just 5, because 1 third times 3 is just 1. And then I have times 7 to the 3 fourths. And that is all I can do with that problem. In this one, 
I'm just going to do everything to the negative 1 6 power first. So 2 to the 6 I'm going to raise to the negative 1 6. And then 4 to the 6 I'm going to raise to the negative 1 6. And there are other ways to go about this problem first step. You could have put this in the denominator. Again, I'm just showing you one way. Um, 2, 6 times negative 1, 6 is negative 1. Make sure you're writing the negative 1 there. And then we have 4 to the negative 1. And so this is just, let's put all that in the denominator. Because the 2 has got to go in the denominator. It has a negative exponent with it. And the 4 also has a negative exponent associated with it. So it must also go down in the denominator. So I have 1 8. In this problem here, I see that I have the same bases and I have a division and I'm just going to put my invisible one to make this a little bit easier for myself. Actually, I'm going to rewrite the invisible one as a 5 over 5 so that I can easily subtract exponents. Because now, same bases and I'm dividing, so I subtract and I'm left with 10 to the 3 fifths. All right, now this one. This one's quite tricky. And these are just going to take practice, and you'll see that we're going to do a lot of practice problems. You just need a lot of practice in order to start seeing these things. You see how both the numerator and the denominator are raised to the 1 fourth power in this one? Okay, so I'm just going to focus on the inside right now. And I see that both of them are raised to the 1 fourth power. And so I'm going to kind of go backwards here, and I'm going to say, both that 56 and that 7 were raised to the 1 fourth power. Again, I changed colors because I'm just concentrating on that inside. And then I'm going to do that whole thing to the 5th power. Now, why did I do that? All right, again, let's just concentrate on the inside for a second. Okay, and now I'm going to focus even further inside. Because now I'm just going to focus on that. And I'm going to say, look at that. 56 divided by 7 is 8. And what did I do to that? I raised that to the 1 fourth power. See, so I have not violated anything here. I just kind of dug deeper and deeper inside of this problem to try and simplify in some way that I could. And again, you just need practice and you'll start seeing it like this. I looked at that problem and I saw that I had the similar, the same one fourth power and that's why I knew I could do this. If these had been different powers, I couldn't have done this at all. 8 to the 1 fourth power is saying what times what times what times what equals 8. I don't know the answer to that, so I'm just going to leave my final answer as 8 to the 5 fourths power. Now, if we're doing the nth root of a times b, I can separate that into the nth root of a times the nth root of b, and this shouldn't be all too surprising because remember, this is the same thing as a times b to the 1 over n, which we just did in the previous slide, that is a to the 1 over n times b to the 1 over n, which of course is just this. And then the same thing goes here. I can do root the nth root of a over the nth root of b. Again, b cannot be equal to 0 because we don't want to divide by 0. And this is the same thing as what we did in the previous slide where we did a over b to the 1 over n is just a to the 1 over n over b to the 1 over n, which is the same thing as that. So it's just written differently. Again, I really like the fractional exponent, so I tend to stick to that. The ratio of the magnitudes of two earthquakes with magnitudes m1 and m2 as measured on the Richter scale is given by the equation r equals 10 to the m1 over 10 to the m2. The table gives the magnitudes of some of the largest earthquakes that have occurred in the U.S. How many times stronger was the 1964 earthquake in Alaska than the 1812 quake in Missouri? Okay, so here's 1964, and 1812 is here. So basically I'm saying that M1 in this case is that 9.2, and M2 is the 7.9, and so our ratio is just given by 10 to the 9.2 over 10 to the 7.9. Same basis, and I'm dividing, so I subtract the exponents. 
and so I get 10 to the 1.3 and when I put that on my calculator I get 19.9526 and so how many times stronger? About 20 times stronger. All right, this is to simplify, and it might be tempting to say, well, I just learned that this is the cube root of 125 times 8, and so I should use that. But I'm going to say, why use that? When I said, if you can break things down before you build them up, do it. And so I want to try and break it down first. The cube root of 125 is saying, what times what times what is 125? And that is just 5. So this part's 5. And the cube root of 8 is 2 and 5 times 2 is 10. I think that's much easier than trying to do 125 times 8 and then finding the cube root of that. Now when I go over to this problem, I think the same thing to myself, except that I don't know what the fifth root of 96 is. So instead, I'm probably going to say I'm taking the fifth root of 96 over the fifth root of 3. And so I'm going to use the same logic that I used in that other example where everything was to the one-fifth power, and so I can look at just this part. Again, this is only because I have the same powers. Now I think to myself, well, 96 divided by 3 is something I can do in my head, and that's 32. And now I can do 32 to the one-fifth because I know that 2 to the fifth power is 32. And that is my answer. Now we're going to write these expressions in simplest form. Before I start, I'm going to bring you back to, remember when we were doing root 32, for example, and I showed you the factor tree, and I said that we had to take out pairs in order to take anything out, and that's because we were doing the square root. I needed pairs. So I made a factor tree, and I said, well, this is 8 times 4, and this is 2 times 4, and this is 2 times 2, and then I broke it down to 2, 2 times 2, 2 times 2, and then I went in and I looked for my pairs. So here's one pair, here's another pair. So I took out two of the twos, so 2 times 2 is 4, but I had this 2 left and I couldn't take it out. All right, so now when I do the cubed root, I need to be looking for threes in order to take anything. Let me show you what I mean. So 104 I'm going to break down as, well, how about 4 times 26? And so this is 2 times 2, and this is 2 times 13, and I can't factor it any further. And so again, since I'm doing the cubed root, I must look for 3's in order to take anything out. Since I have 3 of those, I can take out the 2, but the 13 stays under the root, the cubed root. So my final answer is just 2 cubed root of 13. Now when I come over to this problem, I'm a little bit puzzled because I don't really see how I can make this problem better because if I did that 10 over 27 to the 1 4 thing, I still can't simplify that down and it really doesn't make my life any easier. So I'm not going to do that. But the problem is, remember that you can't have roots in the denominator. That one when we're doing square roots, that also goes when we're doing fourth roots. And so I'm kind of stuck. I do know that 27 is 3 times 3 times 3. But since I'm doing a fourth root, I need four of those. So let me just rewrite this. 4 through to 10 over the fourth root of, and I'm going to just write this as this 3 times 3 times 3. Okay, so now I hope that some of you are thinking to yourself, oh, if I had only had one more of those fourth root of threes in my denominator, life would have been so good. Well, the good thing about math is I can always multiply by one. And so why don't I try multiplying by the fourth root of three over the fourth root of three? Because look at what I've just done now. Now I have one, two, three, four of those fourth roots of three. So I just have a three, right? Because now I just put one more in. So I have four of them and I can take it out. And I do have something different on the top now. I still have the fourth root of 10 times three, because see they're both fourth roots. And so I have the fourth root of 30 over three. Let me just do one more of those because that is kind of tough. So I'm just going to make up one more right here. 
Let's do um, the fifth root of seven over the fifth root of eight. All right, so we're gonna think to ourselves that eight is two times two times two. But in order to do the fifth root, what do I need? I need two more of them in order to take it out, right? All right, so I need two more of them. So again, I'm doing fifth roots and I need two times two. In other words, I need four. <laughs> So you could write it as two times two or you could write it as four. Either way, they're equivalent, right? And so now on the bottom, I have my eight, which was two times two times two. And then I have my four, which is two times two. And so now I have five of those. In other words, I just have my two on the bottom, which is what I wanted. And on the top, I now have, since they're all fifth roots, I can just multiply them. And so I have the fifth root of 28 over 2. All right, so now in these, well, you'll see that this is the fifth root of 12, and this is also the fifth root of 12. So I have seven fifth roots of 12 minus one fifth root of 12, and you can always write that invisible one. So I had seven of them, and I subtracted one of them, so I have six of those fifth roots of 12. In this one, I have nine to the two thirds and nine to the two thirds. So I have four of them plus eight of them. So total, I have 12 of them. And I can't do the cube root of nine because I don't know what times what times what is nine. So just leave it like that. Now in this one, the problem is I don't have the same thing under the root. So let's see if I can break this down at all. Let's see, 81 I know is nine times nine, which is three times three, and this is three times three. In 24, I can break down as four times six, which is two times two times two times three. And since I'm doing the cubed root, both of these, I need three of them in order to take something out. And so I can take out one of the threes, but I still have the three left underneath of the cubed root. Minus, I can take out the two, but I still have the three left under the cubed root. And now look, I have three of those cube roots of three minus two of those cube roots of three. Since these are the same, we can subtract three minus two is one of those third roots of three. And that's my answer. So let's look at these examples and see if we can make a rule. I hate the word rule. Let's just call it a generalization because we're understanding it, right? All right, let's make a generalization about it. Oops, and I made a typo. Change this. This should be the seventh root, and this should also be the seventh root. All right, so in this problem, I say 5 to the seventh, and then I want to take the seventh root. So 5 to the seventh is 5, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven, <laughs> oops, seven. All right, but I needed seven of them, right, to take it out, but I have all seven of them, so I just get five, right? In this one, I have negative five to the seventh power. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so I have negative 5 as my answer, right? So in general, I just learned that anything to the nth power, when I take the nth root of it, I just get that x out. Because in this one it was 5, the x, and in this one it was negative 5. And I just got itself out. But let's look at this problem. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And so I just get 3 out. But in this one... If I have negative 3 times negative 3, negative 3, negative 3, well, I, first of all, if what's underneath the root is negative, and I want to take an even root of it, remember that it would give you an imaginary number. But in this case, you'll see that all these negatives, negative and negative becomes a positive, and negative and negative becomes a positive. And so really, in this problem, this is equivalent. This problem is equivalent to the fourth root of 3 to the fourth power, which is just 3. And so this just pops out a positive 3. And so it's very important that this actually gives you 
the absolute value of x because this answer would not actually be what x is, which is negative 3. It's actually the absolute value of negative 3. All right, now you don't need to memorize this, and if you didn't understand this perfectly, that's just fine. We'll talk about it more in class. So in this problem here, man, I made another typo. This was supposed to be 625 so that it came out nicely. And so the fourth root of 625 is just 5, and if you don't know that, Go and do 625 to the 1 4th power on your calculator. And don't forget to put your parentheses there. And then you have z to the 12 over 4, which is just 5z cubed. See why I like fractional exponents? They just make more sense. All right, so in this one, 32 to the 1 5th is 2. Hopefully you know that by now. M to the fifth power to the one fifth, well five times one fifth is just one. You don't need to write the one. And then n to the 30 divided by five is just six. Okay, and then on this one, I want it to be, I want it to come out nice, 18. All right, so this one I'm just going to do r to the six over six over s to the 18 over six. And so I have r to the one over s to the 3. That's it. Now in this one I'm going to look at the number part and I'm going to say to myself 56 divided by 7 is 8 and so I'm just going to leave the 8 in the numerator because 56 divided by 7 was 8 and then let's see. So here I have a to the 1. I'm going to rewrite this as a to the 6 over 6. I have a to the 6 over 6 on the top, and I have a to the 5 over 6 on the bottom, which means that I have more of the a on the top. How much more? a to the 1 6. Now let's look at our b's. Well, I don't have any b's in the denominator, so I'm just going to leave that b to the 3 fourths in the top. And then the c's, well, this is negative, so it's going to come up here and become positive. And so that's a c cubed. And now I've actually eliminated everything from the denominator, so I just have a 1 in the denominator. And so I'm just going to write that as 8a to the 1 6, b to the 3 fourths, c cubed. And I'm done. So in this problem, well, I see the cubed root of 6, but I know that 6 is just 3 times 2, and I can't actually take anything out of that so let's see I'm just gonna put leave the 6 underneath it there I can't do anything with it now the X's remember I have one two three four of them and so I actually can take out three of them and leave one of them inside so I'm taking out an X because I have the three and I'm leaving one inside moving on to the Y's the easiest way to think about the y's is that I do y to the ninth to the one third power, and that is just y cubed. And so that entire y cubed comes out. Let me move that x over. I didn't leave enough room. So x y cubed, and then the z to the fourteenth. Well, let me just think about it as z to the fourteen over three, which is four and two thirds. And the only reason I'm writing that as a mixed number is that helps me identify that I can take out the 4, but the 2 I cannot. I have to leave in. Um, let me just explain what I did right there a little bit better. And it's probably easiest with this x to the 4th when I'm taking the cube root of it because I just explained it uh, visually. This is going to give me x to the 4 thirds. In other words, x to the 1 and 1 third. In other words, I can take the 1 out, and I still have one of the x's left inside, right? And so the same thing if I had done x to the 5th and taken the cube root of that. Well, visually, that meant 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then I could take one of them out, but two of them were still left under the cubed root. And if I thought about it as fractional exponent, x to the 5 thirds is equal to x to the 1 and 2 thirds. In other words, I can take one of the x's out, but two of them get left under the cubed root. And so you'll see why I really like the fractional exponents.
Okay, so that's that answer. And so in this one, I have p to the 8 sevenths over q to the 5 sevenths. And I hope nobody's panicking yet. I do have a root in the bottom and I need to get that root out of the bottom. I already have five of those Qs, so all I really need is two more of those Qs, and I would resolve my problem. So um, I need to multiply by one here, so I'd better do the same thing on the top as I did on the bottom. And so, uh, first of all, can I simplify P to the 8 sevenths? Well, that's the same thing as P to the 1 and 1 seventh. So I can take one of those Ps out, and I still have left under the radical one of those p's. And both of these q's, the q squared, is left under that seventh root. So I can just kind of put them together like that. And then I just have q to the one power. And so that's my final answer there. Fancy stuff, huh? All right, one more. So here I have, let's see, 18 of these cube roots of u minus 11 of these cube roots of u and so that just leaves me with seven of these cube roots of u and this one again look these are exactly the same i have 15 of these a to the fourth b to the two-thirds and i have another eight of these a to the fourth b to the two-thirds if these were not absolutely identical i could not add them up but since they are that means that i have a total of 23 of these a to the fourth b to the two-thirds. Okay, and then we go to this problem where we're like, oh my goodness, um, I definitely typed this wrong because these were all supposed to be s's. Oh boy. All right, let's rewrite these with x's. And note to self, never use s's again because they look like fives. Minus x fourth root of 80x cubed. Okay, let's erase that and rewrite it like this. And now let's start again. All right, now we look at these and we're still not um, so happy because we see that this is not exactly the same as this. But um, 80 is pretty big and so maybe I can break that down. Let's see, 80, we wanna take the fourth root. Let's try and break this down, eight times 10. And eight we know is, I'm just gonna break that down to two times two times two. And this is two times five. And so look, I have one, two, three, four of them. How perfectly. I'm doing the fourth root so I can take one of the twos out and that five still stays under this fourth root. So let's rewrite this. Let's keep the first thing as it was, fourth root of five x to the seventh minus, you can take this two out, so now I have two x, and what stays under this root? Instead of the 80, I just have the five left, because I already took the two out, but I still have this x cubed left underneath of there. And now these are still not identical, but I'm not panicking yet, because I see that I have x to the seven fourths, which I can reduce to x to the one and three fourths. So I can take one of those x's out, so I have 10 x now, and what stays under the root? Well, I didn't touch that five. All I did was change this to now only three left underneath. And now life's looking pretty good because now this is identical to this. I have 10 X of these minus two X of these. 10 X of these minus two X of these leaves me with eight X of these, and these were the fourth root of 5x cubed. And that's my final answer. And that's it for this lesson. Bye.